totally forgot I had these stones. I got a set of Veneve um, diamond stones, diamond water stones. I got an 800 grit, a 1200 2K combo stone. I'm going to go ahead and use these tonight on my Dalton 07 Militia. I'm not finished with this one. It's been sharpened with the Pride Abrasive 601K. So I'm going to go ahead and take it to the 800, 1200, 2000 just to see what the polishes look like. I'm not going to test it after each stone, but I am going to look at the scratch pattern after each stone. We'll get started with this 800 grit, which is an Edge Pro stone. I decided to start with this before I purchased the full size stone just to get a feel for it. See if I liked it and wanted to spend the money on a full one. I've used it a few times, but honestly, I don't remember much about it. I've heard conflicting reports about scratch patterns not being very good, how there's pockets of abrasives, and it's, you know, a 50 50 chance whether your knife hits one of those pockets and actually gets abraded or if it's going to ride across the binder. And that's what's going to do the abrasion. Because of that, the scratch patterns don't always come out very good. From what I've been told, the coarse grit stones do not suffer from this issue. They don't clump up as bad as the fine grits. Again, I don't know the truth to any of this. This is all hearsay and secondhand information. Not sure if that's stone material or metal swarf coming off here. I'm not putting pressure down short of maybe hand weight, but I'm not even putting hand weight really. Really just enough to keep just enough to keep the knife on the stone. It is taking a better prop polish. Then what I got from that Pride 1K seems to be a little brighter. The stone does load up quite a bit. Again, I don't know if that's metal swarf or if that's stone. I'm going to go ahead and clean it with this little silicon carbide. stuff stains your fingers, whatever it is. These are the Pride 1K scratches. Of course it's been stropped. These are the Veneve scratches. That entire apex in the base has been missed. I 
think I got a little recurve action going on back here due to that plunge grind. Very small, but it's occurring. So the scratch pattern's a little bit brighter on the veneer. As opposed to the Pride, which has a dull matte kind of finish. Nice thing about these is they don't require a lot of water, they are truly splash and go. They're very hard. You don't have to worry about getting mud against your apex and dulling things out. I personally didn't see anything really wrong with that scratch pattern. I'll go over it a little better with my microscope. Looking at the bevel under the microscope, I can see random scratches that are deeper in some areas than others. That's possibly what folks are talking about when they say there's pockets of abrasives. So there's like little dots of clumps of diamonds. So you've got like a polka dot effect going. In between those polka dots, it's just the binder material. And then you have a pocket of diamond, then binder material, then another pocket of diamond. So it's, it's random and it's scattered. There's no uniformity to it. Looking at the scratch pattern and having stray deep scratches kind of promotes that image. So something, something I noted and when I show the magnified images, you will see it. Maybe if I can figure out how to do some animations, I'll put like an arrow or something alongside it to point them out. So this says it's between 3 and 2 micron on this side. And that makes it a 1200 grit stone in their grit rating. I'm not sure what grit rating they use. Don't really care. There's just too damn many of them out there to keep up with. So, three to two micron. Let's see how this one works. Again, I'm not going to use pressure here. Short of the weight of my hand. As you can see, the stone is pretty wide. It's even wider than most of my water stones. It gives you a nice, large surface area to sharpen on really nice sounds like there's plenty of feedback And the bevel's polishing up just a little bit brighter than where it was. And once again, not looking at it on a microscopic level, but just eyeballing it here, it's got a pretty scratch pattern. Scratch pattern. I like the way it looks. It's not unattractive. It's definitely brighter than what you'll get out of just standard, you know, diamond plates like an Atoma or, you know, the DMT type plates. 
let me take that back. This actually might be on par with the extra, extra fine DMT. You know how you get that beginning, the beginnings of a mirror polish. That's kind of what this is. Once again, I'll bring you guys down, kind of give you a comparison of one side versus the other. Here we have the 1200 grit scratches. Versus the 800. Whatever this stone releases, it stains your fingers. I'd imagine it probably stains clothing too, so something to keep in mind if you're using these stones. Be careful not to get this binder material, whatever it is, on anything that you, uh, <laughs> you care about getting stained. The next time it loads up, I'm going to try cleaning it with my Nagora, Nagora stone and see if that will actually remove the buildup. Not sure how well you guys can see this build up, but there is a little bit going on. So I'm gonna just take my little Nanawa Nagara stone, Nagora stone, and see if it'll remove it. And yes, it seems to take it right off. Okay, we're gonna flip over and get started on the 2000 grit side which is labeled as one to zero micron. And this side's already got some buildup on it. We're just gonna go ahead and knock that off. Just so we start with fresh, clean stone. As 
far as how these stones feel, they're very slick. They've got almost a glazed kind of feel, similar to what you would feel on a ceramic stone. It's almost like sharpening on a spider cove fine. I would say feedback is similar. You've got audible and tactile feedback you can feel when your angle is off and you're riding the shoulder. So I'm going to strop on 2 micron CBN emulsion, 1 diamond micron, 0.5 and then 0.25. I'm not going to bore you guys going through all of those, but we'll get started here on the 2 micron at least. Looking at those microscope photos, I didn't see a whole lot of difference between this scratch pattern of the one micron stone versus the scratch pattern of the three micron. They both have just random, very deep stray scratches. I'm not sure if that's caused by those pockets of diamonds or that's just the nature of the beast. I don't look at enough edges under the microscope to really know. It's probably something I should start doing. I think you guys get the picture here. We'll come back when it's all stropped up. We're just finishing up on the final strop here. This is 0.25 micron diamond. So the bevel has a nice polish, but it's nowhere near a mirror got a little reflectivity to it this is after all the stropping it's not ugly at all but it doesn't have that high luster I'm not sure if the high carbide stills behave differently I've heard they polish better on diamond stones than say CPM 154 I don't know the truth to that, but it's what I have heard. It's not bad. It is a little hazy though. You can really tell right here in this logo. It's wicked sharp. It feels very, very keen. So let's get this on the edge on up edge guesser and see what it tells us. Let's see what our results are going to be tonight. So averaging out the numbers comes out to 119. 
definitely an improvement versus where it was off the pride stones. It certainly feels very keen. I'm not yet done with this knife though. I am going to polish this edge even more. I want to get a nice mirror finish on it. Or maybe not mirror, but I want to get a nice reflective clean finish on it. So what do I think about the Venive stones? Honestly, I like them. I can't comment too much about that whole polka dot issue of pockets of abrasives. I don't know if that's actually true. I don't even know what kind of problems that can cause other than your scratch pattern won't be consistent. You'll have random deep scratches throughout your bubble. I don't see how that would really hurt your cutting unless the apex had some lower spots and you cut into one of those and it caused a chip maybe. Other than that, I can't think of any scenario that would make that a problem. I could be wrong. If I am, please tell me. I don't want to... I've been accused of this before. I don't want to spread false information. Jesus Christ, that's not what I'm here to do. They're hard. They behave like ceramics. Same kind of feedback. Same kind of feel. They cut about as fast as a ceramic. What's not to like? Other than the scratch pattern. I'm a big fan of really hard stones. Shapton Pro, Shapton Glass, my new Batama set. Hard stones just give, for me, better feedback. I like the way the knife feels running across the stone. I don't have to worry about mud and slurry coming back upon my apex and dulling it. I just prefer a nice hard stone that doesn't release abrasive. These fit that bill quite nicely. The bonus is they'll cut any steel you put them against. S90V, Maximate, S110V, 10V, CPM 3V. It'll cut them all. Trouble comes into paradise though when you look at the amount of abrasive you get. I don't remember the price of this stone, but looking at how much abrasive you get, it's not a lot. Obviously, they don't wear very fast, but they do load up, and you have to figure out a way to get that load up off. If there's another way to do it without actually removing too much abrasive, and you guys are aware of it, again, please let me know. Share the knowledge with me. I think that's going to do it for tonight, though. If you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them below. I appreciate you watching. Y'all have a good one.